So hello everybody uh, and thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Natalia and I'm a regional coordinator at Beetroot Academy in Sweden. Before we start, uh, I would like to go through some technical moments. Uh, if you have any trouble with the audio or video, please rejoin uh, or send us a message and we will try to help you. Uh, throughout the webinar, please keep your uh, videos closed and microphones muted. It is important uh, for the quality of the sounds. And uh, all questions for the speakers, you can type in the chat. Uh, once again, welcome. Uh, tonight's session is hosted by Beetroot Academy. If you haven't heard about us, um, let me quickly give you an introduction. Beetroot is a Swedish-Ukrainian IT company which specializes in building teams of developers and uh, designers to work for international clients. And uh, Beetroot Academy is a Swedish IT school uh, that helps people to take their career to the next level. Our goal is to help Sweden stay on track for continued growth uh, by providing IT specialists, as well as increase the number of females in the IT. Uh, we teach intensive IT courses, and in our schools, uh, we have both offline and online courses, but currently in Sweden, um, all our courses are uh, online, fully remote, uh, which means that you can study with us from any city. Right now, we still accept uh, students uh, for the courses that are going to start next week and the week after. Uh, these are front-end development, UI UX design, and Python. So feel free to um, uh, contact me after the webinar if you are interested in any of these courses. So thanks again for joining and for your attention. Tonight we, having, uh, we are having two speakers, uh, Pranav and Sergey. They will be sharing with us their insights of Python usage in two IT areas, uh, data analysis and web development. Hi, guys. Hey, everyone. Hello. So can we start? Are we good? Okay, I can start, I think. So my name is Sergey. I'm software developer from Ukraine uh, company Post Industria, and I also teacher in Beetroot Academy uh, for Python courses. So I've been working in IT since 2000, year 2000, I think. It's hard to remember now <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so today we are going to show you basically two different uh, areas where you can use Python. Uh, mostly it's a web development and uh, now, nowadays it's a data science, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, areas. So uh, I'm going to show you two examples uh, of web development and uh, for now we're going to show you a, a data science part of our session yes and uh, at the beginning i would like to say just a couple of words about python in general just to have more background maybe and more information what exactly python is so first the release of python as a language was uh, made in a year one uh, in the year 1991 so now it's a most it's about yeah it's about uh, 30 uh, to no, 30, 30 years yes i think it's about 30 years if i'm not mistaken uh, and as i said as i said before you can uh, use python in all areas because uh, python it's a like we mentioned in our subject it's a universal tool so you can use it in a web development just uh, some sim simple scripting for uh, your devices for example to control your computer to do some automatization with it so in the uh, you can look through internet and search some examples of how to automate for example uh, your desktop environment so at the beginning your python script can start some browsers maybe chrome maybe firefox open some uh, 
sites, uh, log into your mail, uh, check your email, etc., etc. You can do all this stuff with some automatization. In the web development, you can do anything you want. You can see uh, what you can see now through internet, all different types of sites, just simple blogs, uh, more, more advanced uh, e-commerce shops, etc. Uh, yes, and uh, you can even use Python as an embedded language to some devices. For example, Tesla uses Python to control their car system. So it's a really, it's a really good uh, language, as I said. So it's not restricted to some particular areas uh, as different languages as uh, you can maybe no or not uh, so it's a universal language and uh, it's up to you what you want to do with it so if you want to create some new game it's okay you, you can do it if you want to create a super popular internet site it's also okay and if you can if you want to control your system uh, your home systems of uh, your smart home system uh, you can also do it without any problems. So where you can see Python in a web nowadays in the real world? So first of all, uh, maybe a majority of you, uh, not each day, but, my, but at least once per week or once per month, uh, touched with Python in a web, in terms of usage, uh, such popular site as Instagram. So all backend of Instagram was written using Python. So also for those who use YouTube also will be interesting to know that all, back, uh, all backend of uh, YouTube also was written using Python. So similar sites as Pinterest, uh, National Geographic also uses Python as a main language for not for uh, since beginning of google uh, python is their main language so for for those who decided to try uh, and uh, be part of google it's also be really good to um, teach and study python so uh, as i said at the beginning uh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you two examples of uh, small projects which I prepared uh, uh, before our meeting uh, to show how to use Python in a uh, web. Let me open chat just to see your messages. So I hope uh, you can you can see my screen without any problems. I try to increase maybe some scale. Is it any better now? Just let me know if something will be unreadable or something hard to notice. Okay, as I said, uh, first example will be uh, how to build just simple, really simple example of personal blog. Uh, application uh, which you can uh, host on somewhere in the internet, maybe using Heroku, maybe Amazon Web Services, maybe Google Cloud, etc. And uh, I created it using Django framework. Actual um, actual amount of code which I uh, written was wasn't so huge. Uh, so just a couple of comments, for example. Uh, you can start project uh, and you, you can create a new application just with just with couple of uh, common uh, just with a couple of comments and then you will have as a result almost fully functional block with automatically generated admin interface and you need to, uh, just to write a couple of uh, templates to actually show for uh, your data for customers, for example, or whoever you want. So let me start my uh, test example. Uh, 
uh, for those who for those who ever seen a, a Django, it won't be a problem to recognize this command. So it's a uh, Python managed to dot py run server. And this command okay. Let me Yes, sorry, was wrong directory. So I started my development server and uh, we can open it. It is just simple block with couple of posts. You can see just one, three posts. You can uh, filter through category. Uh, you can uh, see all posts. You can see details of each post. I also added some images to this post. You also added some formatting to it. And actual, uh, and uh, basically that's all what I uh, done on terms of coding, actual coding. So I just created a couple of templates and one model which represents this data in uh, our database. So if we open uh, our models, for example, here you can see that it's just two simple classes which describe my blog application. And uh, I just uh, show these classes using a markup language, uh, specialized markup language uh, in Django framework. And uh, basically that's it. No huge logic. I don't need to write a, uh, I don't need to write any uh, servers, actual servers. I don't need to write any uh, parsers, any other utilities to uh, just to work with this model. So I can add a uh, couple of models uh, and run, start my server. Everything else will be done using uh, by framework itself. So it's one of the big advantage of using, for example, Python and framework Django. So you don't need to write a lot of these things. And uh, as a bonus, I also uh, get uh, automatically generated admin interface, as I mentioned before. So it's completely, uh, uh, it's completely uh, part of, it's a part of uh, Django itself, so you don't need to write it either. So I can log in it uh, inside it, I hope. Yes, and I can see that I have my posts. I can add new one, for example. Uh, uh, online post. I can add some images to it. Yes, for example, nature. I can add category to it and I can add some content to it. Let me open some dummy text. Copy it. I also can add content to it. I can add some formatting, for example, it doesn't matter. So save, update my homepage, and I can see, you can clearly see that it's new online post. So I just added it without any problems. So I just create uh, using uh, uh, already existed admin interface. Uh, so basically it's uh, one of the smallest example which you can, uh, use in your real life, for example, to create your own blog, uh, own personal blog. And uh, as I said, it's not so, it's not so hard uh, to do it, especially if you have some basic knowledge of Python and you can always open a Django project site and read the documentation. They have really good documentation to which 
can guide you step by step how to create some uh, models, how to create templates, how to create initial data for your application. And it's not so hard because, uh, yes, uh, it's not so hard because uh, I personally think that their documentation is really uh, worth to check and it's one of the easiest to read documentation uh, about Anastasia, about your question, uh, what about app development? Uh, which exactly app development you mean? Uh, desktop application or not? Sorry if you have, if I pronounce some na names slightly incorrect. Uh, yeah, you can uh, write in chat. So yeah, you can also create a desktop application and you create, can create a mobile application using uh, Python. So it's not a problem. Uh, there are also some uh, libraries uh, which can help you to create these applications using just Python. So you don't need to know uh, anything about platform itself, for example, iOS, Android, or Windows, or MacOS, etc. So you can create uh, application using just Python. So it's also one of the part of uh, language uh, ability of and areas where you can use uh, Python. So it was the first example, rather a quick one. So uh, I don't want to make a lot of attention for actual code because uh, majority of this code was generated automatically using uh, scripts in Python or using Django framework. So you don't need, for example, to write uh, application configuration. You don't need to write uh, uh, some initial models. Everything, is, everything will be generated by Django itself. So it's not uh, like a huge, uh, problem for developers nowadays to write a lot of codes because uh, because it's uh, mostly after automatically generated by some tools so and uh, second example which i wanted i want to show you it's a rather more advanced example uh, a small application web application to uh, generate uh, college, uh, co uh, different colleges from a set of uh, uh, photos. Let me open it. Let me open it. Yes. Uh, this second example, it's an uh, example of uh, more advanced application which is splitted by uh, this meeting it's not about teaching it's to show how and to when to you uh, and uh, when you can use python and uh, to uh, propose you to teach it and to learn it to study it uh, just uh, to get a really interesting job, a good position in your company, for example, or in other companies, if you want to change your position currently. So uh, it's like, uh, mostly it's like a introduction to language itself. So just uh, because we don't want it to make you you know boring of teachings right of the beginning and it's rather a short period of time to actually teach someone something so i hope this answer for question one of the question in the chat uh, so second example as i said uh, it's a small uh, application to generate colleges so it's uh, it can it's a two-part application. First part, it's a backend written in, uh, using Python. Uh, and second part is a front-end application written using TypeScript and React. And React. So it's uh, like you can 
see it uh, nowadays in a lot of applications you divide front end and back end you divide your uh, presentation part uh, from your business part of your application so let me run it and uh, let me start it one application uh, majority of all this uh, uh, stuff uh, you will be able to study during our course Python for beginners. So we will cover majority of this question in this course. So um, I hope it helps you to decide if you need uh, this course or not. So you also will be able to ask a lot of a lot more questions during this course and maybe choose area which you want to use and you want to work later. Uh, uh, so I started my application now. So as I said, second application is more advanced application of uh, building colleges. Yes, absolutely. We are going to learn uh, on our courses uh, from very beginning, from uh, from basic of Python to algorithm, uh, so some web projects and uh, desktop applications. So uh, everything will be covered in these courses. So if you want it, you can join. If you want, you can join and uh, teach and study uh, everything uh, together. So, as I said, second application is a small color generator application. So, here I implemented a registration process. I also, so we can create a new user. Uh, let me check. Let it be example, user example.com, password, one, two, three, four, five, six, user example. I can sign up. Sorry, wrong URL. So I can login to example.com. So we can add some images to it. For example, a couple of images of nature. Yes, as you can see, everything will be uploaded to uh, backend in a uh, background. So nothing is stuck in a queue, for example. Uh, you can continue to work and now you can generate college. And as you can see, uh, you receive, uh, we received uh, just example of how Python can uh, answer, how, how Python can also help us to uh, work for example with images so everything what you can see here i built using python so i uh, created small uh, library to generate these colleges so all processing is done on the backend using python so also it's a really good tool there are plenty of libraries uh, uh, which which can help you to process images you can uh, also process images and uh, recognize some faces on these images for example you can automatically uh, you can create small application which automatically uh, tag your friends on your photos for example it's also possible you can something similar which is done by facebook now so also it's a good area and a good tool to do this uh, if you need so really uh, I just uh, for this particular application I just need to write a small uh, library uh, I just need to write a small library to actually generate colleges uh, just small algorithm to randomly place them on a on a one picture and then I use uh, uh, 
already existed a library which is called to pillow to process all images and to copy them from one image to another one to shrink to expand them etc etc so it's another example of how you can use python uh, according to which actual tools you can use to write code in uh, python uh, so yes, you can use Sublime Text, you can use uh, VS Code, Visual Studio Code, you can use uh, uh, JetBrains uh, PyCharm product, it's one of the best. Personally, I'm using JetBrains products, so for me they are most advanced one. So, but uh, it's, feel free to use anything you want. Uh, Sublime, VS Code, uh, Veeam, uh, just Notepad, etc., etc. It's just up to you which uh, particular tool you want to use to write uh, scripts using Python language because you don't need to have uh, anything special on your uh, computer. Uh, you just need to have Python itself and that's all. And later you can decide it which exact tool you want to use. Uh, Feel free to ask any other questions. So, uh, as I said at the beginning, so you can use Python everywhere. You can use them on uh, your devices in terms of uh, not only mobile devices, but also some smart devices, uh, some you know, watches, some uh, uh, wash machines, etc., etc., uh, whenever you want. And as I said, uh, Tesla uses you use Python to control the after uh, the cars. So uh, also BMW BMW uses uh, Python in some of their projects. Uh, I know teams in Ukraine which works uh, for the BMW for these projects. They use Python. Also, as I said at the beginning, Instagram use Python, YouTube use Python, in Google use Python, so one of the primary language. So it's really popular. And according to latest researches, maybe months or two months ago, Python became second most popular language in the world. So just first on first place is a C, uh, if I'm not mistaken, C programming language. And in the second on the second place, now it's a Python. So. Feel free to use it if you have any uh, interesting ideas. You can uh, implement them using Python. You can implement them using uh, any frameworks which come came from uh, which come from with Python. <laughs> it's a controversial question. What what is the best language to use? It depends on what you need and what you're going to achieve, but uh, on the first stage of any project, I personally recommend to use uh, exactly Python because it's easy to set. You don't need to establish a lot of a lot of computer power to uh, build your project. You just you can just run, update it, run again, run again, and see a result. Uh, so for a second for this last question i think we can uh, give a, a word a word for, for uh, prana but uh, after small i think small three five minute break yes natalia um yeah it's uh, up to um participants i think since the webinar is quite short we don't really have to have a break what what, what do you think prana yeah, I mean, I can go. Yeah. Okay. So yes, for this, uh, for machine learning question, we will have an answer from uh, Branow. But is uh, you know that uh, GitHub, GitHub pages, it's just for static hosting. It's, it doesn't allow you to run any particular language. Uh, so it doesn't allow you to run a Python, either PHP, either Go, anything. So 
kirka pages it's just for static pages just for simple html pages without any actual dynamic content uh, actual language background language or backend language so if you want to uh, have if you want to have small hosting for your projects, it's better to use, for my personal opinion, it's better to use DigitalOcean or uh, Linux uh, hosting. So uh, at the end of our uh, meetup, I will post a couple of links. Yeah, so just to, just my personal opinion. So feel free to use them. Yeah. Okay, for now, you can continue. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Awesome. So I'll go. Uh, my name is Pranav. Uh, I work as a data analyst here in Stockholm. Uh, I've been working, uh, uh, doing the job of an analyst for three years now. Before that, I worked in a couple of uh, different places with business management, with cloud computing, etc. Uh, originally, I studied uh, mathematics in uni. Uh, so I don't have a formal training in Python. So everything I learned, I learned by myself, uh, watching YouTube videos, uh, practicing by myself and implementing everything that can be done uh, on my own device. So yeah, it took, took me like a couple of months to get hold of it. Uh, but yeah, if it's definitely doable uh, to go to different websites uh, online, use resources online uh, and, and learn uh, Python, even if there's no one guiding you uh, per se to do it. Um, yeah, so I can share my screen now and uh, show you a quick example of uh, using data analysis for Python. Uh, to answer the earlier question, no, there, we don't have a ready example for machine learning as, as of now. The, the focus was more on data analysis. So yeah, let's do this. I will... mm -hmm. Yeah, you can have your chat uh, on the side while, uh, while I'm, I'm doing stuff. So if you have any questions, feel free to write them. Um, for data analysis, we use this uh, program called Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, think of them as similar to a notebook that you would have uh, in front of you if you're doing some scribble work or writing something. So these are notebooks that you write code in, you execute, see the output of this code, and then execute the next piece of code. And uh, th this is very specific to data analysis uh, because uh, it, it's, it's more of a uh, mindset uh, thing than a Python thing. So you can also do data analysis with Excel, with some uh, BI tool, like a business intelligence tool like Tableau, uh, but Python gives you very granular, uh, uh, how do you say, granular approach to doing data analysis. So yeah, for, for me, I, I, I like it quite a bit. Um, yeah, so to begin with, we first import uh, the libraries that uh, we need to to this, so libraries in uh, Python, think of them, for those you don't know, as uh, libraries in the real world. Real world. So it's like a, a set of, uh, a place where you have all the code ready and then you can just fetch code as, as and when you want and implement it on the go. So pandas and numpy are the two most popular libraries that are used uh, for data analysis. Uh, you can check out all the reference code and everything you need. Uh, or at uh, pandas, just Google it if you if you want to know. For this example, you have uh, we ha I have a sample data database of uh, books that are in Amazon, and in order to see this uh, database, I'll import it into this variable df, and then I'll ask Python to show me the top five rows of this uh, database uh, data set that I just imported. So you can see the top five rows and generally uh, how the data set looks, but this is all I see for now. What do you, why do we need pandas and numpy? Because those are the libraries which host uh, all the code that is necessary to do data analysis. If you wanna do it from scratch, you would have to write the code all by yourself in order to execute it first, uh, which is like too much, to, too much to do. All right, so, Next, I want to know more about this data set because this by itself doesn't give me much information. So I asked uh, uh, Python to give me all information about this data set. Now I see that this data set has 550 entries by libraries. Uh, yeah, as I said, uh, libraries, think of them as uh, physical libraries. Libraries, uh, you enter a library, there are books with all the shelves. 
You can take out a book, read it, use it however you want, put it back. In Python, it's something similar. It, uh, instead of hosting books, it hosts uh, predefined or pre-built code. So you can call upon this code, execute it, and yeah, Python runs that code free. Uh, continuing here. Uh, so yeah, I see all the columns that are here, as well as uh, how many total entries are uh, that are there in this data set. Uh, over here, we can see that there are some columns that have uh, less values than the total entries in the data set, which means that these columns have uh, some values that are missing. Uh, and this is a very common uh, across uh, data sets. Uh, it's like a, a standard thing. Data, data sets are messy with uh, values that are missing. So generally, even before you start doing any sort of analysis, you need to deal with uh, missing values. So generally what we do is we first find out uh, how many of these values are missing. So we write this code, uh, we say, figure out the values that are missing and then sum of uh, all the counts, which gives us uh, all the missing values in the columns that are before. So we see uh, this column user rating over here has 443 non-null values and 116 values that are null, which means they are zero. So uh, there are two ways to proceed with this uh, the proceed uh, with missing values. One is you can drop all the, the missing values, which means you, can draw, you have to drop the entire row. Or the other way is you figure out what these missing values look like. So for example, in this case of uh, user ratings, you, we will figure out what these values look like. All right, so you have this column of user ratings, and then I asked how many uh, user rate, how many times 4.7 occurs, 4.6 occurs, 4.7, so on and so forth. So based on this, in this column user ratings, uh, 4.6 occurs 93 times, and then so on and so forth. So generally we see here uh, that uh, the, the range of ratings is between 3.9 to 4.6, but most of the ratings that are here are concentrated between this value of 4.9 to 4.6. Most of the values are here. So in this specific case, instead of dropping all the rows where there is zero, we can uh, insert the mean of the entire column. So in order to do that, we do We ask to fill an A, and we say we want to fill it with the mean rating All right, and then we execute it, and then we ask the same question again. Say the same question again. How many of them are zero? And ta-da, now we have no zero values in this column because we filled them with the mean earlier. The other option, which is uh, in some cases you can do, is to just, uh, what ways can be used to calculate metrics to measure usage in Python? Uh, yeah, so when it comes to data analysis, we don't uh, work with it in the same way as in programming. In programming, in, in data analysis, we don't care how the code is executed, we care more about uh, what information we can extract out of this data. So Python is just a tool to, 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 to get information out of data and not uh, do Python in such a way that it executes effectively. Uh, yes, so uh, in this case, we can do drop NA, which drops all the NA or not available values uh, in the entire data set. And then uh, we see that that has been executed. And yeah, we see that uh, this is the case over here. Uh, now this is just basic data cleaning, right? Uh, now we actually wanna gain some sort of information uh, from this data set. So for example, I wanna know how many nonfiction titles are there and how many fiction titles are there. So I use this command called group by.
and then I reset the index because this command messes up uh, some of the indexing and bam, we see that there are more, what is grouped by? Okay, I'll come to it. So now we see that there are more uh, nonfiction titles than there are fiction titles. So we basically counted all the occasions when fiction comes and all the occasions where the word nonfiction comes based on this category of genre. And we come up over here. So group by, uh, as someone asked, is a, is a way to group data by certain uh, category. So over here, this column genre has uh, two categories, fiction and nonfiction. And now we, what we wanna do, we wanna group all the values that come under fiction, and then we group all the values that come under nonfiction. If you want, we can run the same for some other column. Now say, for example, I wanna run this for the column year to figure out uh, how many, yes. So now we see that there are titles across years are fairly distributed. So each year there are roughly 50, uh, book titles that were uh, that came out uh, according to this second someone has a question what if i want to analyze a log file with dictionaries as such yes so if you go to uh here uh, so yeah you have uh, various ways to read files so the the most common way is to read csv but you also see over here, there's lots of other ways to import files. There's HTML, HDF, all of these file types which have uh, specific functions. So all you have to do is import the code, figure out uh, what are the specifics of the co code or the file that you're using, uh, and yeah, execute it and import it out, uh, which is the easiest way to, to go about this. Um, yeah, Nick, moving on, uh, the final example. Is, uh, is very common in, in data analysis to build graphs uh, in order to convey information to non-technical experts. Usually as an analyst uh, working in Python, you work with other people uh, in, in, in your company who don't understand Python, don't really understand mathematics, don't understand a lot of uh, things that I do uh, on the background, which is why it's easiest to convey this uh, information uh, via graphs or visually. Can we read the files directly from the internet without importing it Look, Yes, you can uh, put a link in uh, GitHub link, for example, if the, the, the GitHub library is open and then import it straight from the internet. Uh, yes, so going back to graphs, I'll use the most, uh, the easiest graph that is inbuilt in Pandas is called a histogram. And now I wanna see a histogram of uh, the counts by year. So, um, what is a histogram? It counts visually every time uh, something appears. So for example, the number 2018 appeared over 100 times uh, in this graph. Number 2016 appeared around uh, 50 times, so on and so forth. So it shows us the distribution of data in the data set to, to tell us where if the data is skewed towards one side or skewed towards the other side uh, and helps us make a conclusion on uh, whether the, the, the information that we're seeking is significant or not. Question, are there any situation where you would personally not recommend using Python? Um, yeah, I mean, I, in, in context of data analysis, I, I, uh, I personally prefer using Python, but well, if there is something where you wanna do like very simple operations, uh, then maybe it's fastest to just do a very simple operation in Excel instead of opening Jupyter notebooks, importing the file, writing the code. Uh, instead of doing all of that, it's just easier to use uh, Excel and um, uh, do like click, drag, drop, done, bam. Is it possible to use live data from a web page? Um, well, in theory, yes, but then you need like some different, uh, different libraries that fetch data on the go. And then it's probably not just Python because then you're using a, a data pipeline to feed data into some sort of data engine that uh, presents uh, an output on the other side. Okay. Uh, okay, I will uh, answer that question. But uh, before that, uh, this, is, uh, this was a quick summary of what I wanted uh, you guys to look at today. To just quickly sum up, we import the data, we clean the data, we run some sort of analysis to understand how the data is. 
and then finally show like some sort of visualization, which is generally the goal, because then you take out this visualization, you put it in some sort of report and write like this report uh, to send it out to your manager or yeah, whoever wants to have this information. Uh, going back to science in Sweden, would it be possible for someone with the background and let's say civil or mechanical engineering to switch to this field? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't uh, I don't know about data science per se, but data data as a data analyst for sure. The thing with uh, Stockholm specifically is that there is this uh, uh, Karolinska, which has lots of people studying PhD, uh, and those people are generally preferred as as data scientists because they have much more experience doing their an analysis with with SciPy and like uh, R. Uh, so yeah, it's just like uh, in terms of competition, the, the, there's a lot of data scientists, PhD qualified people in the market, so it's easier to be an analyst. Jupiter is the program used for data analytics. Yes, it's very common uh, in the industry. Uh, histogram is used without using Matplotlib. Are there any other tips like that? Well, in this specific case, uh, histogram is inbuilt into Pandas, which is why I don't have to import this Matplotlib library. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want more tips like that, check out other graphs that are inbuilt in Pandas. So you don't have to use Matplotlib. Uh, I was making a blog, but had a problem, and the problem was that the file was swapped, and I was not able to solve it. How do I fix it? Uh, I think that that question is for you, Sergey. Uh, why is Jupiter preferred or example Anaconda? Anaconda is like a um, a one-stop solution where you have like this VS Code, Jupyter Notebooks, blah blah blah. But uh, it's it's like you have uh, you have your Windows OS, and then inside that OS you have the your Chrome browser. So think of Jupyter Notebooks as the Chrome browser inside your Anaconda. Uh, I will give the mic to Sergey to answer the question before. Uh, yeah, about swapping. I'm not sure if I. <laughs> understand it correctly but uh, what do you mean your file was swapped so if it was damaged somehow you can just write new file and that's all and or create another file also if you used some tools such as uh, Weem or uh, Visual Studio Code so they can restore this file so I'm not sure yeah what doesn't actually mean. But, um, this code. You need to, if you just created new page and uh, didn't save your file, so I think it's not so easy to restore it. So if you just create, so you always need to save your work as often as possible. So it's one of the biggest problem in IT in general. So uh, you always need to save your data, so your work constantly. Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes there is a big box in. A, software so personally i not so often use uh, sublime so not sure if they have any abilities to restore your previously entered information which which wasn't stored before on a disk for example yeah so it's the biggest problem in general, so <laughs> you always need to think about where you need to store it and how often you want to save your work. Because as Pranav said, uh, so you can work with your analysis, with your Jupyter notebook for a long time, and you accidentally forgot to turn automatical save or something like this to save it. And definitely you will yeah, you lost all your work, so. Uh, what is the difference between data scientists and data analysts? Um, 
So uh, data scientists uh, very specifically uh, use machine learning models. So uh, uh, it could be data scientists could be of two types. One type is your person who studied PhD is really good, like absolutely fantastic in mathematics and Python. So you can build actual models from scratch and think about theories. These are data scientists who do research. Uh, and then the other type of data scientists is the one who like uh, uses applied machine learning. So there is like libraries which already has pre-built models. So you apply them. Uh, in, the, in the context of whatever data set you want, you build this, uh, you apply this model, check its efficiency, uh, you optimize the model, and yeah, in some cases, you also deploy it in production. Uh, a data analyst uh, never, well, you can do machine learning, but that's not the most important part. Like data analysts more are concerned about building dashboards, uh, more about uh, making reports uh, and things like that. Any other questions? I will try to look through our backlog. Maybe I will find some question which wasn't answered. Okay. Uh, you know that uh, there is a historical tradition, uh, yeah, answering to the last question. There is historical tradition to use uh, PostgreSQL together with Python and MySQL together with PHP. But personally, for me, there are not a huge difference. If you need a database with a rich data set, you you are going to work with a, uh, you are going to work with uh, some geographical locations. You need to store uh, some. Uh, geographical data inside your database, so I would prefer to use uh, PostgreSQL. But if you need uh, just simple database which holds your uh, blog data, for example, your posts, your tags, uh, your categories, it will be absolutely enough uh, to use either MySQL or, or PostgreSQL without any problems. Uh, why well, you can use uh, so yeah mysql if you are familiar with this database feel free to use it there are no big difference at all especially if you're going to use uh, Django. so for Django, it doesn't matter at all which database you use so Django uses uh, high level abstraction which uh, hides all this database specific stuff from you and uh, you can Majority of times you can freely switch between different databases uh, anytime you want. So, actually, uh, if you want, just download your data from some sources, for example, from government sites, etc. So, it's completely enough to use uh, just Python and uh, requests library. So you don't need to use Django framework, etc. If you want, just download your data. But if you want, uh, for example, to visualize it later, for example, to create a page uh, with uh, graphs, with some tables, etc. So definitely, it will be good to use some framework like Django, Flask, uh, etc. Uh, Sherry. Um, are there any difficulties with this that you would not redo if you turn back? Yeah, I mean, I would definitely, if you have the possibility, do like some sort of, uh, uh, not course per se, but like a place where you have some sort of a mentor to guide you through it, then it becomes so much easier. For me, when I had questions, I didn't have anyone to go to, so I would post my questions on Stack Overflow if it's not already asked. I posted so many questions and I got banned. So it's like, yeah, get a mentor. Uh, about question from Kashik, yes, if I'm not mistaken, about models and about uh, this code and finding mistakes. Feel free to join uh, our Python course and we will check everything you want. So we can look through all this information and uh, find mistakes together. So. It's always good to find something together.
Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Natalia? Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Sergei. Thank you, Pranav. Um, um, I just wanted to say that uh, I will be sharing this uh, recording with everyone who signed up. And uh, if you guys have any links that you want to add in this follow-up email that I'm going to send tomorrow, just uh, uh, send it to me. <laughs> um, yeah, or anything else that you want to share with the participants. Uh, um, Sergey, you're muted, by the way. Uh, sorry, I am going to post just a couple of links just to have them and feel free mm. to use. Yes. Because at the beginning, I was uh, yeah, I was asked about some links, so mm -hmm. yeah. I add them to this chat because if I'm not mistaken, there is uh, Zoom replay. If yeah, we are going to use Zoom replay or something like this because they include all chat messages also. Oh, yeah, I usually save it manually. <laughs> ah, okay. But, yeah, I will do it just for um, just to make sure that I have it. Okay, then uh, uh, last question for you, Natalia. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you can just email me. So um, um, if you signed up through the Google uh, form, then I probably have your email. You can also type it here so we can um, I can reach out to you or you can reach out to me yeah good uh, yeah I guess uh, that's it then if you um, if anyone has questions you can just uh, email me and then I will forward it to Pranav and Sergey um, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Feel, free, feel free to use Natalia's <laughs> yeah host for all questions yeah thank you so much for so many great questions and uh, thanks to our um, speakers uh yeah so um Thank you for attending. yeah have a Thank nice evening again. and see you all later Thank you. bye, bye, -bye. Thank you. Bye.